Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about Nope. I am reviewing this kind of a lot later than most people, um, but I am going to also, because it's been out for a while, get into more spoilery stuff, so if you don't want to be spoiled, I don't think this is the video for you. Uh, I will say I really like the movie. Um, I think you should see it if you haven't or are interested in Jordan Peele and this kind of movie, then I think you'll really dig it. Um, I can't really say any more. That's why there wasn't a premiere of this one. Uh, but if you have seen the film and would like to hear me talk more about the themes in the film itself, which I'd find this hard, this one, it's hard to talk about and being vague and like, what's the real point of that in my mind? Thank you for watching this part. If you haven't seen Nope, give a like anyway, and let's get into it, I guess. Nope is, is, is about kind of filmmaking, Hollywood, the history of filmmaking, spectacle, the history of spectacle. It's uh, about animal wrangling. There's an Akira reference, uh, or the Akira, famous Akira bike shot. Why is that in this movie? Who knows? Who cares? There's a lot going on. I don't know if it fully comes together or whatever. I don't think this film is trying to necessarily do that. It's not 100% clear of its intentions, and it's not 100% clear in trying to tell a story. This is just sort of a uh, nope. That's what it is. It's 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 <laughs> that's kind of what it is. But I think what it's saying about filmmaking and spectacle and animal wrangling are kind of the major things. But he does kind of like pepper in his own influences, as he should. As is the point of even seeing the spectacle of Jordan Peele himself, you know, which he has become like a spectacle. You want to see the unique vision of him is part of why you're seeing the movie. So, um, but the Akira shot is pretty cool. I expect to see that in the supercut of all those Akira shots. Um, but do any of those that aren't in Akira make any sense? And does the Akira one? But they're all cool, so who cares? I mean, basically this is about a brother and sister trying to touch a UFO and you find out it's not just a, it's not a ship that catches people. The UFO itself is a living organism. And that is uh, insanity. In fact, if you just watch this and didn't care about spoilers, you're probably like, say what now? And I don't think even me describing it is doing a good job. So you, you played yourself, I guess. But I find the idea of spectacle interesting because Jordan Peele has said many times he wanted this to be a spectacle. And this was promoted like a big summer blockbuster, even if it's not, you know, doesn't look like how summer blockbusters look anymore. And, and you know, all those like Hollywood's not like that anymore and stuff. But... Uh, I do think it's saying something about spectacle and the history of spectacle and the idea of filmmaking because it brings up that idea of the uh, horse and the success of images. It's called uh, uh, Plate 626. Um, I can probably just have it on screen now and stuff. The idea of like the first time they saw like successive images that kind of made up what a motion picture would be, basically. And they keep saying the black jockey in that was their great, 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 and another great grandfather he was like the first movie star but the idea of even filming that the idea of filming that was to kind of set a bet i guess um, or the mythical version that i've heard over the years i should have clicked on the wikipedia and looked up this actual thing but the idea of the they wanted to see if a horse actually at all times has one foot on the ground or how a horse actually runs or walks you know how how does that actually happen like what does that look like if we're able to really see it in successive images and actually watch it rather than just see a horse run by quickly and that in itself is a spectacle it's something you've never seen before it's the idea of like well i've always thought it's this i've always thought it's that and like well here is proof and what are you unlocking with that troop what are you unlocking with that spectacle the idea of spectacle and what you know film and filmmaking and the idea of even taking moving images means because i think this is even kind of bring up like the whole debate of that people constantly go what is cinema and cinema is this and cinema is that but maybe what i think this kind of film is saying by trying to just get footage of this spaceship is like it all is filmmaking and moving images and what secrets have we unlocked by doing that and our need to make these things to make moving images to tell stories to make the perfect shot what does what insanity does that do to us how film itself is kind of this spectacle that can't be contained much like the animal training that is at the forefront of this now the whole thing with i think it's gory or gordy's home th that is the only part of this movie that does not hold up to me because there's no way gordy's home aired in the mid 90s like that is something that came out in the mid 80s or late 80s like you're telling me in the era this didn't come out in the era of small wonder this came out in the post seinfeld post friends era i don't 
Like, I'm sorry. Like, even TGIF was, like, you know, grasping for straws at that point and just, you know, going off of, you know, that Boy Meets World was still on and, like, everything else on there was, you know, they were either thrown to the CW or they weren't doing well. So it's just, like, that... I, I kind of think the actual reason that is because I know Jordan Peele is a big SNL fan and um, I don't think you'd want to have anyone talk or anyone would talk about a skit from SNL of the mid 80s like that's just not unless I'm wrong and that Phil Hartman had already come in then but you couldn't have done what he was saying about Chris Kattan and stuff which is interesting like it also shows like how images and moving images and storytelling and interpretations of that like he doesn't want to talk about Stephen Young uh, seeing that horrific incident at Gordy's Hope he wants to talk about the SNL sketch because that's a way to kind of not talk about it directly and maybe that's part of what we're doing with filmmaking because in a sense like what you're seeing with all this animal wrangling in it is you're getting kind of you know filmmaking the production of film is you know a, a falsity a lie you know like this is all a green screen basically no but in in movies editing if i edit something and then you know come back there's a cut there and that's you know in a sense not real that's not really what's happening i manipulated this to tell you information and i think uh there there is a sense to that that like you're doing that and you as a person understand film language understand what you're doing but like in the real world with animals specifically they don't and like if a horse sees a weird thing he's still going to kick because he doesn't understand like that's there to make a production you know to put on a show the idea of putting on a show but that you know originally we wanted it to do these productions and now it's become so much more well, like you have the guy in the silver helmet um from tmz like that was how you would capture a ufo the tmz would do that that would be the footage like at some point you talk about this this is a pruder film with jfk but like this is a pruder film only happened the way it did it's because that was the media climate at the time and looking at the media climate now maybe moving images is so much more you know having that footage to sell to someone to put on youtube to be monetized look how far we've gone from just like understanding a horse now we can replace the horse in cg we don't even need the fucking horse and like so many so many ideas that can happen at once and you have to be the right one to catch it but um is catching it too dangerous you know are you messing with the unnatural by constantly trying to find a good idea and it's one of those good ideas going to destroy you thing is with this film is i think a lot of those are there i think he is saying something about animal wrangling it's interesting most of the animal wrangling things i've read are less um uh the animal doing something and more like the people doing something the animal if you ever read about the uh sequel to any every which way but loose the clint eastwood monkey movie uh which that is um that is a weird i don't it's a very weird 70s movie and stuff. But the, the sequel, some horrific things happen to that monkey. And a lot of times you hear more about the animals getting hurt. Then this film chooses to do the reverse, which is like, you know, would the would the evil of man really been better if we showed that? But I don't think anyone wants to see people beating up animals or something like that. But uh, both those things, I think, show, and with the UFO, uh, what, what trying to monetize the kind of un tenable can ultimately do um especially if you're not treating them right and messing with something you don't understand but maybe i also thought using spectacle and using filmmaking using information this way do we understand what we're doing by manipulating and condensing information to be the most palatable to people is that in a sense do do we think we know what we're doing we think we can handle this and realize we've opened up something more as we see what's happening with technology and information can't we all admit that like we've opened up a pandora's box that no one's really sure how we're going to close again and is that the real horror of what this movie's talking about this is a really open inter interpretation film and i think his other films somewhat but very much i mean get out you kind of figure that one's pretty easy to figure out but the and us is a little more all over the place i think this one i was surprised like how simple it sort of works in a sense but how much more complicated that simplicity maybe feels i love the cast from daniel kalua uh who's a, one of the best actors going right now kiki palmer is really great um i also like michael 
Wincott, who I haven't seen since like The Crow. I don't, I probably see him in other stuff, but he was the villain in The Crow. Seeing Michael Wincott was great. He was really great in the film. Uh, I think he, uh, he also, he does a thing when you see that character and he's going, he's the DP in this. Um, also, before I go off about his character, Michael, uh, Brandon Para, I thought was also a big standout. I would like to see more of him. Um, I think those are kind of the main people. Also, Keith David. Keith fucking David. He's barely in this movie, but god damn, I love that. I know Jordan Peele's a big uh, John Carpenter fan, but like Keith David. I love Keith. Keith David can be in fucking everything. I love that guy. Seriously. I was, that was great seeing Keith David. But anyway, the uh, Michael Wilcott part has this thing where he's watching old kind of what looks like silent footage of like animals fighting. And that was a real thing, by the way, in the silent era before we had the Discovery Channel or wherever people see like animals fighting footage kind of things, or just YouTube or even had normal, you know, broadcast television, people would go to the movies to see that. And that was part of the spectacle. Now, a lot of those documentaries, there were, if you see them, uh, the one guy who directed King Kong made two of them, which is interesting. King Kong sort of about him, if you didn't know that, or a mythologized version of him. But I saw, I read a long time ago that his film, he made grass, and that's trying to be more naturalistic and capturing a moment. And then he made a second documentary, which I forget the name of, which will be up on the screen somewhere. Um, and that, because of Nanook of the North, suddenly they're purposely making like they're planning out shots and like making it look planned out and professional and things and um i really hate that kind of documentary thing um it's it's sort of like silent film reality television or something but it's interesting because that was what used to be a spectacle and seeing this weird ufo is you know trying to just get that perfect shot of the ufo is kind of the spectacle and showing something you've never seen before but maybe it's just harder now because so many opportunities are gone there's less places to put something and if you put it there maybe you'll make the money maybe you won't maybe you'll get screwed over and uh there's so much of that in this film i do think it's about filmmaking i do think it is about animal wrangling and all those things but i i think it shows it's probably or so like what cinema is and what the moving image is at this point and we can still have a spectacle but what does it mean to even have that now versus what it did that you know you know just trying to see a horse do that thing but now we no longer need the horse and our need to film the horse is different at this point why are we doing it and made this big industry and they're just trying to show something that really happened but is trying to show that something really happened excessively dangerous you know are we pushing it too far trying to capture every little moment and like what secrets and scariness are we unlocking by doing that i also think it's interesting like we don't actually ever see the the, the what is good i guess as a ufo leave earth or come to earth like it could just be a creature on earth we don't know which used to be part of spectacle going to a place you've never been that crossed my mind. I thought he's maybe harkening back to that because when you see that in Michael Wincott's uh, ed editing suite. I, I think Nope is one of the best films of the year. I'm very excited uh, by what Jordan Peele is doing. I don't know if this was a review or just me theorizing, but it is probably one of the great statements about the movies, I believe at least. Um, I want to see it a few more times, but I also think like it's so open to interpretation it could be three or four different things you know is he saying like even about himself as a director now that he's become a name once you're in the name like how far can you push things where it's still safe and he can still contain this thing to relatively you know almost talks to like creativity and the desire to make a big thing in a sense of kind of madness as much as it is about capturing something and i love the idea that like in a sense i think the thesis of the film is saying like that open the shot that they talk about of the jockey and the horse is then sort of replicated at the end and like what is it that we really want we want proof that we can kind of communicate and ultimately like you watch that shot of the horse and it's from like i don't know when it's from uh, a long time ago but you can still like feel something from that image because you were able to capture that moment and maybe that's the real part of movie making maybe that's the part of cinema and maybe that's the scariest thing in the horror film is that you can capture that moment but what does that moment unlock what does it do to the world once they know that thing and you know not in a, like a scary like the world will fall apart way but are there more of those things are more of them going to start looking for them was that the only one are we just going to hear theories forever what is it? And I think much like when you have to mess with those creatures, you don't know 
but in a sense like you you have to know and even though you're like nope nope which i love it. they say nope quite a few times it's funny i think it's a very powerful movie but i've never seen a studio film be this unclear this like interesting and twisty and stuff it is it is a fairly interesting film uh in especially for a studio film daniel kalua is in some of the most interesting studio film, films like between this judas and the jack black messiah and uh widows i'm always like what the hell like who got this made and somehow he gets to me in all of them i don't know how that worked but this is a really impressive interesting film and Part of me thinks it's a little divisive, but I think over time people are going to appreciate kind of all we can glean from it. I'd be curious to see what Jordan Peele's actual intentions are, but part of me doesn't want to know. Part of me wants to like kind of go in the void and discover what's there. And maybe that's the kind of sickness at the heart of this film that drove all of this to happening. And is that good? And is it good to show that honesty? But at what cost do we have to pay to get there? So if you've seen Nope and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.